All right, folks, hold on to your seats and get ready for a wild ride through the forgotten world of clean undies techniques and other incredible toilet facts from the past. Uh, about a hundred years ago, we didn't have an abundance of hot water or plushy toilet paper. As a result, ancient people had to get creative when it came to hygiene all the way up to the 20th century. Today, I'm going to spill the beans on the most mind-blowing contraptions people used in toilets throughout history. Believe it or not, the oldest known toilet is a stone structure found in modern-day Pakistan, complete with a seat connected to a drainage system. This baby is around 4,500 years old. Talk about ancient pooping technology. The first mention of a toilet goes way back to 3,600 years ago in the Bible's Old Testament. Deuteronomy 23, 12, 13. Designate a place outside the camp where you can go to relieve yourself. As part of your equipment, have something to dig with. And when you relieve yourself, dig a hole and cover up your excrement. In ancient Egypt, they had flush toilets about 2,500 years ago, but hey, they hadn't invented tanks yet. They relied on a bucket of water, but at least they had ceramic pipes way ahead of their time. Now let's get to Greece, where archaeologists keep digging up oval ceramic pebbles ranging from 3 to 12 centimeters in diameter. For the longest time, it was thought these were gaming pieces or pot lids, but get this. Philippe Charlier believes these disc-shaped beauties served as ancient Greek toilet paper. Evidence to back up this cheeky theory? First off, there's a wine vessel at the Boston Museum of Fine Arts showing a dude using one of these pebbles to do the butt scoot. Secondly, the Greeks had a saying that went like this, three stones are enough to wipe your behind. And last but not least, the biggest collection of these ceramic buddies was always found near ancient latrines. So yeah, the Greeks weren't always picky about their wiping materials. Sometimes they'd even use broken pieces of pottery. Here's a fun fact. Some Greeks must have been really vindictive or just plain ticked off, as they'd scratch the names of their enemies or hated politicians on their hygiene tools. Imagine wiping with a pebble, bearing the name of Socrates, Pericles, or Demosthenes. Now that's some historical shade right there. Toilet scrapers were a thing in ancient times in general. But depending on the landscape, People used all sorts of objects to get the job done. Uh, the Roman civilization knew how to pamper themselves, especially when it came to convenience. Yep, that's where the first public restrooms were born. When Emperor Vespasian suggested charging a fee for using these lavatories, his son Titus was not happy about. He thought it was beneath them to fill the imperial coffers with such a dirty scheme. But Vespasian shut down the argument with his legendary line, Money doesn't stink. And from that moment on, public restrooms in the Roman Empire became pay-to-go. And let me tell you folks, the payment was worth it. The most luxurious restrooms were reserved for the patricians. They were decked out with marble, incense wafted through the air, and slaves warmed up those seats with their own bums. They even had orchestras playing in there to drown out any unpleasant noises. But the common folks had to make do with cheap restrooms, basically wooden structures with a hole in the floor. But the Romans weren't done with just fancy facilities. Oh no, they came up with a more sophisticated instrument for wiping their behinds. Picture this, they got rid of the mess using a tersorium, a special contraption that was basically a stick with a sponge attached to one end, a booty cleaning wand, if you will. These things were reusable, mind you, between visits to the commode, the sponges soaked in basins filled either with seawater or diluted wine vinegar. Talk about an ancient antibacterial wipe-down, huh? But even then, folks knew that visiting public restrooms too often was like inviting a bacteria bonanza, so better hold it in if you can. Oh, the wonders of history. The Romans sure knew how to live lavishly, even when it came to their bathroom business. All right. Let's venture into modern-day Japan, where personal hygiene quirks still exist, but they ain't got nothing on the crazy stuff from the past. Get this. Public toilets used to be perched on bridges over river canals. 
Why, you ask? Because they believed that seasoning the water with some feces and pee would boost the fish population, eventually ending up on Japanese dinner tables. I guess you could say they were serving up some organic fish. Now it's time to bid farewell to the Kavaya. That's what they called these unique commodes only after World War II. By the way, building similar river cabins was also a thing in Vietnam, the Philippines, and Indonesia. And get this, instead of regular old toilet paper, the folks in the land of the rising sun used pine splinters, about ten inches long and one to three centimeters wide. Let's just hope they didn't confuse those splinters with their chopsticks during dinner. Now, that would be quite the culinary experience. These contraptions were called mokan. Before taking a trip to the restroom, each wooden sliver served as an information carrier. They jot down short business messages, household notes, and whatnot. Once the message was old news, they'd scrape it off with a knife. Only when it became impossible to write on the stick would it finally meet a government official's rear end. Oh, the journey of the mighty mokan. In the homes of regular folks, these mokan thingies were a rare sight. Can you blame them? Dealing with wooden messaging sticks isn't everyone's cup of tea. Japan has come a long way since then, and thankfully, they've got plenty of modern facilities to take care of business in style. All right, let's dive into medieval Europe, where the fall of the ancient civilizations also brought down the glorious city sewers. Pooping wasn't a luxurious affair anymore, even for the high and mighty. Medieval castle toilets were a far cry from the Roman ones. They couldn't even compete. Lords, dukes, and kings, living high up in their grand castles, had secret chambers, or let's call a spade a spade, toilets on every floor. And you bet your boots that they needed one on each floor because, let's face it, in medieval times, diarrhea was the rich man's constant companion. These restrooms hung out in projecting parts of the building, and guess where the waste flowed? Straight into the moat surrounding the castle. Talk about giving the place some eau de medieval castle from miles away. But wait, there's more. Sometimes there wasn't even a moat around the castle, so they'd set up a reservoir for waste right under the building. In the year 1183 at the Erfurt Castle in Germany, the floor... Well, let's just say it experienced a little malfunction. For the thrilling conclusion, you can check out the video link. In the cities, things were even worse. Folks relied on night pots, which they emptied straight out of the windows. Medieval Paris streets, for instance, were more like sewage rivers, and they had to occasionally clear the city ditches, because, you know, the enemy climbing the fortress walls on a... A mountain of poop wasn't exactly the best defense strategy. As for wiping, not everyone bothered, but when they did, it was a free-for-all. The rich folks used fancy strips of expensive fabric for their delicate derrieres. Meanwhile, the poor folks made do with old rags if they were lucky. And out in the countryside, it was all about leaves, moss, and whatever they could find to do the job. Ah, the glamorous past. We've come a long way, haven't we? Let's raise a toast to modern plumbing and bid adieu to the medieval mayhem of potty practices. Keep those historical nuggets coming, Europe. We love a good laugh with a side of bazaar. Now, let's travel to England during the Renaissance. It's a royal flush of historical hygiene tales. Starting from the 16th century, things improved on the cleanliness front, at least for the English aristocracy. This is where and when the stool chamberlains made their grand entrance. Picture this. Their job was to accompany kings and lords to the toilet. Yep, you heard that right. These chamberlains were handling some seriously private business, servicing royal behinds. And get this, they often hobnobbed with doctors assigned to wealthy courts. These VIP poop whisperers would dish out information about the properties of their lord's excrements, all in the name of monitoring their health. Talk about a royal stool scoop. Despite their peculiar position, the toilet chamberlains were some of the highest-ranking servants in the hierarchy. They didn't let just anyone attend to their business. Only trusted folks got close to the lord's derriere. And you know what? During potty time... 
Kings and lords would gladly spill the beans on important state matters to their faithful attendants. It's like they had a real-life throne advisory council. In 1596, John Harrington presented Queen Elizabeth I with a special night vase equipped with a flushing mechanism. Oh, how fancy! But alas, the Queen didn't have sewage or plumbing at her disposal, so they had to put a water reservoir next to the marvelous chamber pot. Not everyone could afford such luxury, so this fabulous invention didn't become widespread. But fear not, for an English clockmaker named John Cummings was about to take things to the next level. In 1775, Alexander Cummings was granted the first patent for the flushing version of the toilet. He redesigned the bowl shape, improved the flushing mechanism, and introduced the S-shaped trap, better known as the bend, to hold water in the drain pipe, preventing those nasty sewage gases from infiltrating buildings. From then on, toilets were referred to as water closets, a combination of water and closet. And as scientific progress continued, new designs kept coming, and flush tanks got even better. However, it wasn't until the 19th century that cities finally managed to clean up their streets, thanks to severe cholera epidemics. European authorities decided it was time for some proper sewer systems and water purification. And guess what? This is when public toilets made their grand debut. On February 2nd, 1852, London proudly opened its first public restroom for men. Ladies had to hold it in a bit longer, though. The women's restroom was unveiled on February 11th of the same year. Oh, history! You never failed to provide us with royal toilet tales and revolutionary plumbing achievements. These historical toilet tales take us on a wild ride through time, showcasing the evolution of human hygiene, so let's flush away the past and embrace the wonders of modern plumbing with a smile. Travel back in time with us as we explore the fascinating history of toilets and bathroom practices. From ancient Roman extravagance to medieval mishaps and the ingenious flush designs of the Renaissance, this video will leave you flushed with laughter and appreciation for modern plumbing. Join us for an entertaining journey through the evolution of human hygiene.